what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so man we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of smackdown there was a lot of great things that happened on this show love what they're setting up for crown jewel and potentially what they're setting up for survivor series man they they got a lot of a lot of good stuff on the way so let's get right into what happened on this show i definitely enjoyed how things played out for smackdown i think a lot of y'all that was in the uh, uh that was uh, in the chat earlier tonight y'all from which i was saying at the end of the show y'all definitely enjoyed it as well so we got to start off with randy orton he's walking through uh gorilla you see him walking through gorilla and as he's walking to the entrance way uh he stops and he you see triple h in the back so he stops and he's he's saying something to triple h or whatnot and then you know he goes out his music is still playing the entire time so it's like one shot of him trying to talk to Triple H, essentially for him to come out. So he gets to the ring, and you can tell he's walking with a purpose. He's very serious. He it ain't even though the crowd is you know singing along his you know theme music. He's still he's on a mission, and the mission is very clear. So he uh pretty much says, you know what? Last week I asked Nick Aldis, yeah, you know if I can get a match with Kevin Owens. He said I got to talk, you know, uh to the boss. Well, since you are the boss. Triple H, I just saw you back there. Come on out here. Let's have a talk. So guess what? Triple H, he obliges. He comes out there. And you can tell Triple H was irritated. He didn't want to be out there. But he comes out there. And he basically is like, hey, man, can we set up a match with Kevin Owens at Crown Jewel so we can get this going? And Triple H didn't want to do it. He kept saying that, you know, you know, he, he, he can't he he can't do it. Or whatnot and basically randy was like oh so you're basically protecting him like i get it that that's your that's your guy he was a, a great friend to me at one point i get that but just set up the match so we can get this going and triple h kept saying i can't do it so basically randy's point was you're protecting him why are you protecting him just say you're protecting him and and stop with this the charade and then finally triple h got fed up and said no i'm not protecting him uh i'm not protecting him i'm protecting you essentially and randy's like what he's confused triple h says look i love you man but you literally just came back you know from a uh a, 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 a spine injury and the doctor said at one point there's a good chance you may not wrestle again i just got you back and right now kevin owens is in a different place for whatever reason, he's trusted you and Cody the most out of everyone. And now that he doesn't trust you or Cody anymore, he's he's in a different place. He's, he's mentally not there. So I don't want to risk him hurting you and then your career is done for good this time. And Randy took exception to that. He's like, look, I didn't ask for the... Uh, COO Triple H to come out here. I asked for the game to come out here. What would the game do? What would you do if you could still go in this ring? What would you do? Would you just sit there and let things happen or would you would you handle business like like we normally do in this ring? He talked about how this is the same guy that broke into his home, uh attacked him with a sledgehammer threw him through his own win uh, window in his house and then proceeded to try to murder him with a sledgehammer. I love that they brought that up. This is this is you we're talking about. So you expect me to just not do nothing? Give me this. Give me this match. Let me do this. And fans were saying, you know, give him the match, let him fight. So basically Triple H was like, he pretty much told the crowd, I hope y'all know what y'all are asking for. You want the match? Fine. It's made official. Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton at Crown Jewel. But he did tell Randy before he left, make sure you watch your back. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. I love how they're selling this idea that Kevin Owens is going off the deep end and he really is about to go rogue. KO is all about crashing out. But now that he doesn't view them as friends anymore, Oh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. So very excited to see how that match will play out. Next, I wanted to talk about Gunther and Cody's interaction. 
So Cody comes out there. They have the you know, the crown jewel championship in the ring. He comes out there, does his usual entrance. But before they can get to the second wall while Cody was in the ring, Gunther's music hit and cuts off his entrance. I thought that was really good. I love that. The smugness of Gunther, his heel-like tactics of doing things, you know, just to get under his opponent's skin. He comes into the ring. Before he even gets to the ring, there's a fan with the Cody Rhodes skull mask and whole outfit, and he shakes the fan's hand as a little kid. I'm like, oh, he's a good heel. I love what I love what Gunther brings to the table as a as a smug but very confident heel champion. So he gets in the ring, and he basically tells, um, well, he basically you know kind of does what Cody does. You know, he tells Cody, hey, so what do you want to talk about? And Cody essentially wants to know why does he you know, want to win the 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 crown jewel or uh, the crown jewel championship. And then uh Gunther asked Cody with another question himself, why do you want to win? You know, why do you want to why did you bring up your daughter? This has nothing to do with your daughter. You brought up your daughter last week. This has everything to do with you as a champion. And basically what Gunther's whole angle was for this entire promo is Cody, you care too much about what people think what others think that's your problem you care too much to do what others have done to you won the title for your father you know the the, the title that your father never won you want you want the john cena schedule you know and it, it basically came off what do you want for yourself like you're doing all this to live up to these other people and to impress all these other people and satisfy all these other people. But why? Why are you doing that? And Gunther made it very simple. You know who I want to win this championship for? Me. To show that I am the best at what I do. The best wrestler in this company. Not for anybody else. I don't give a damn about all these people. I only care about what's best for me and my legacy. And of course, Cody with the ultimate baby face. See, that's that's the problem. You don't care about all these people. These people are what makes everything happen here. And then even Cody tried to shoot some jabs like, man, when WWE asked me to do whatever they need me to do, make appearances or whatnot, I'm there. But when they ask you, you seem to not be available. And I like Gunther's response. It's like, I mean, they ask me, of course. And I tell them, no, something that you can't do, something that you don't have the gumption to do. I can tell people, no, I don't need to do all that, which he shouldn't because he's a heel. But I like that. He, I like how he shot down Cody. Like, look, bro, you do all this as because you're a yes man because you, you need that for validation. I don't. I don't need that for validation. I'm me. I'm Gunther. I'm the best wrestler here, and I'm going to show you why I am. I don't need nobody else validation. I don't need these fan validation. This championship shows why I'm the better of us. And I like what Cody responds here, because Cody responds like, you know what? Basically, like, this is, it's not something that I normally do, but I'm going to fire the first shot. And he started attacking Gunther I loved it. I loved it. He just said, fuck it. You want to you wanna go there? Let me show you why you are, you're not as good as me. So he started attacking him, saying, fuck it. We here now. So he started throwing out punches and stuff. But then uh, Gunther had some backup in uh, Ludwig, Ludwig Kaiser. He came and helped to assist Gunther. They started attacking him. That's when Randy Orton came out there for the, the help. But they ended up scurrying away. And once again, it's just it's just a, a a nice nice situation to see Cody get irritated and annoyed and say fuck it. I, I love to see that version of him. I know we don't get it all the time, but I love to see that to show that he has emotions. He feels ain't he gets angry and he attacked. So I can appreciate that. But I don't know if y'all paid attention to this. But as Randy Orton picked up the WWE Championship, he looked at it once again just looked at it just you know he looked at it as he was handing it off to cody they're definitely planning something there this is not the first time uh, randy has helped cody and looked at the title the way he has so pay attention to that we're gonna get to that at some point don't know when maybe sometime next year but i'm looking forward to this randy and um 
and Cody feud. But ultimately, love what Gunther said. Gunther was saying what a lot of the people on the in the IWC say about Cody. Like, they, uh, he's like a yes man and, you know, he's the company corporate guy or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with him being the company guy. But at the same time, it is cool to see him get a little annoyed, get aggressive. He was the one to throw the first punch. I can appreciate that. So, so all right. We got to talk about what happened in the main event of the show. So, we had a number one contendership match between uh, the Motor City Machine Guns versus DIY to see who's going to be, obviously, the number one contender for the tag team titles. And the match was pretty solid, serviceable. Um, but ultimately, the Motor City Machine Guns ended up getting the win. We had like maybe 15 minutes left. So they became the number one contenders. And that's when the Bloodline came out. Bloodline comes out there. We come back from commercial break. Solo is like, hey, man, you know, congrats to y'all being the number one contenders, man. And, uh, you know, I'm introducing you, uh, introducing ourselves to you. You know, I'm, I'm the tribal chief around here. And, uh, you know, he's basically trying to get some information on them. They let them know who they were. And they made it very simple. He's like, hey, man, you know, appreciate the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Whenever y'all ready to give over those tag titles to us, let us know anytime, any place. And Solo with the, the funny jab here, he was like, all right, I get it. Y'all trying to make an impact here or whatnot because, you know, them coming from uh, uh, TNA Impact or whatnot it's like you know them having history with the uh tna impact as well um he's like i know y'all trying to make an impact here but if y'all really that confident why about how about you run them right now what's what's up on having a a, a, a tag team title match right now so nick aldis wasn't trying to go for it um but they said nah nah we down to do this we've been fighting our way to get to this moment let's go set the match up right now and as soon as they set the match up i was like yep they're losing they're losing the match they're losing the titles tonight so the match starts on gets on way and you know at some point in the match solo gets on the ring apron and he's you know trying to tell the tongans to get up and that's when you see someone in a black hoodie pull him off the ring apron and it's jimmy uso ends up attacking him and then he ends up super kicking uh, uh, Jacob Fatu. But then Solo ends up hitting him from behind. And it looks like they're about to start packing up Jimmy. But then Roman music hit. So now they're ready for Roman. They run up the ramp. Roman hits Jacob with a Superman punch. And then he ends up hitting um, um, Solo Sokoa. And then essentially Jimmy and Roman fight off Jacob and Solo to the back. So now it's the Tongans in the ring still with uh, um, Motor City Machine Guns. And then at one point, the referee ends up getting knocked down because it ain't a bloodline match if the ref don't get knocked down. He's incapacitated. They The Tongans decide to go get a steel chair, and they say, you know what, screw it. We about to cheat. And then all of a sudden, someone else comes out the woodworks with another black hoodie, but this time it's Jay with the ski mask black hoodie on combo. Gave him extra stealth power. Ends up attacking uh, Tonga Loa, throwing him over the announce table. Then he gets into the ring. Tama Tonga has a chair. He uh, he misses with the chair. Ends up getting super kicked. And then uh, Jay ends up picking up the chair and starts attacking uh, Tama Tonga with the steel chair and then hits him with a spear for his trouble gets out the ring referee comes back to it for the one the two and the three and Motor City Machine Guns are your new Smackdown Tag Team Champions huge pop crowd love this I love this this was a fantastic moment this was great this was so damn good Definitely putting some love on the Motor City Machine Guns. Definitely got some hype. Crowd was really into that. And, uh, yeah, Jay, Jimmy, and Roman cost the bloodline the tag title. So you know things are about to get real dangerous with the bloodline, the OG bloodline, 
and the new version of the bloodline. But for show, before the show ended, as the motor machine, uh, the uh, Motor City machine guns walk in the back, they gave him a pyro exit and everything with the new tag titles. You see Jay in the ring, and then all of a sudden, you see Jimmy come out, and Jimmy gets into the ring, and they stare at each other, and then they finally hug and embrace. Crowd goes crazy, huge pop, and then you see Roman in the background just looking at them both, hug and embrace. Love it. We still didn't get that Roman and Jay embrace moment yet. I think it's going to happen. Obviously, Jay's still going to have some trepidation about Roman, as he should. So that moment's going to happen where Jay and Roman embrace, and they all really are on one page. But right now, Jimmy is the bridge between Roman and Jay. I love it. This is good. They're not fully together yet, but they're almost there. This is truly fantastic. I love what they did at the ending of the show. They really brought the energy. People, you know, were really excited to see how this played out. And this was a fantastic ending. Love this ending. Can't wait to see what happens next week. Can't wait to War Games. It's going to be fun. But comment down below. Let me know um, what was your favorite part of the show. What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. And are you guys excited for Crown Jewel and uh, uh, I believe Crown Jewel is, if I'm not mistaken, next week. So are you guys excited for Crown Jewel next week and War Games after that um, Survivor Series? Most likely we're going to get some War Games. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about all these things that happened tonight. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.